Welcome back. I'm Marianne Leffel, and I'm with the Monterey County Business Council. Today we're having a, uh, a Middlebury Institute Day at your town, and it's so important. This school creates so much wealth, both culturally, economically, uh, across the board of what goes on here in this region, and most of us don't know much about it. So we're trying to kind of crack into that today and give you a little appetizer on Middlebury. So my next guest is Max Troyer, who is on the faculty at Middlebury and runs and works with one of the programs that I love the most. So Max, welcome. Thank you, Maria. So we were talking earlier, and you've been with the school six, seven years. Yeah, and I'm a graduate of the Institute as well, back when it was called the Monterey Institute. I have a degree in French translation. Okay. <laughs> And then moved to Paris. And then moved to Paris with my wife, who does translation and interpretation, yes. Is she also uh, French? She uh, is. She's American. Actually, she's Canadian. But, but is, uh, her, is hers in French? Same language, okay. Perry, yeah. No. So yeah. at least you can speak to each other. We, yeah. And <laughs> are, are we speaking much French to our kids? Not probably enough. They're not going to be bilingual. <laughs> <laughs> so um, I think your program is one of the most well-known at Middlebury because of just how it reaches out to the whole world because at any given time all of us need some help with translation or with some interpretation mm -hmm. and I got involved a few years ago uh, when a language company wanted to they were exploring coming here and I went to Middlebury and asked for help to land the deal sure. And uh, I learned a lot more about localization and translation because, seriously, when the gentleman called me from Seattle, I didn't know what he was talking about. Okay. <laughs> I was like, help me understand this. So yeah. um, I went to Renee and said, help me, and that's kind of how we did it. But since then, we've brought in three or four more companies and, and some ancillary business with that. Sure. So I think people don't realize what a draw Middlebury has. Uh, both with your faculty and staff, but with your students, mm -hmm. and hopefully we can provide some jobs long term. I, I I believe that's the case, and I hope that will be even greater in the future. Yeah. So definitely. I love that. Cool. So let's talk just a little bit about localization, sure. and translation. And yeah. You can maybe explain it so people <laughs> can understand it. Yeah. Well, so let's start with. Uh, Let's start with translation. Translation is pretty easy for people to understand. Translation is simply um, taking a text from one language and, and adapting it, translating it using the word into another language. Okay. So um, the facts should be the same. The cultural references may or may not be converted to new cultural reference points. Um, but so everyone kind of understands translation. That's fairly straightforward. Now, when we talk about localization in our translation and localization management program, we're talking about everything that isn't translation. So the biggest thing that we do is the project management of a translation project. Um, it takes a lot of people to, to complete a project. Every, if you look at the book publishing industry, a book is written by an author and then editors, multiple rounds of editors come through a book and make sure that it's perfect by the time it's printed. It's similar in the translation industry. A translator translates, an editor edits, a proofreader proofreads, a desktop publishing professional does the formatting and layout, more proofreading takes place, maybe you know multiple rounds. So um, all of those people have to be managed um, and then there's the technical side of, of, of translation as well. So um, software that needs to be in another language or websites that need to be in another language. Um, translators don't do that part. Okay. That's what localizers do. And that's what translation and management, translation and localization management students generally do when they graduate. So they're learning technical and language. Both at the same time. That's exactly. crazy. And we like to say that. Um, <coughs> If you have an interest in language and technology, that uh, the translation and localization management program is at kind of the intersection of, of language and technology. So, I know uh, when we were attracting one of the companies, MPC had a uh, class in uh, Megatronics. Okay. <coughs> which was also kind of important because of some of the technical pieces mm -hmm. that they were giving. So, I love how the intersection of our different schools here comes together uh, with both the military and with the civilian and really provides a, f a full package for some company that's looking to come in. Definitely, yeah. 
I, so. I agree. So how many kids in, or I guess they're not kids, they're young <laughs> adults and sometimes maybe not quite as young, yeah. uh, because you do have a more mature student, yeah. they're a master's it's a graduate program. program. Yeah. Um, how many people in the program? So for many years, um, each year we would have about 30 incoming students, and that was a real nice manageable size. Uh, but last year we split our program into three specializations, um, from one program into three, and now you can kind of specialize in, in translation or the language side, technology, the localization side or technology, or management, the, the business side. Okay. Um, and that has basically caused our program to, to take off and in the year that we launched the specializations, we shot up to 60 incoming students. So our program, the incoming class doubled, and we think we're going to do that again this fall. Um, so we went from basically a student body in the two-year program of 60 students to 120. Um, so we're, we're technically the largest program at the institute now. Um, and we're, we're, our graduates are, are very successful. Um, I can talk about more of what kinds of companies they go into, but we're really happy with the size of the program now. It's almost too big to manage, but we're, <laughs> <laughs> we're hiring. We're hiring more faculty to uh, meet the needs. Well, you know, I had the occasion last week to sit down and meet six of your uh, current graduating students. And uh, they are all Chinese mm -hmm. uh, native, mm -hmm. and they are all here, and they are all graduating uh, May 19th yeah. of this year. Yeah. There, I was telling Jeff earlier, there is not one that I would not hire on the face of the first couple of hours that I spent with them. That's good news. And uh, they were quick to uh, answer, answer what they could do with the problem that we were setting looking at. Okay. But they were also very uh, collaborative among themselves like they would have a conversation like what do you think and then you know it was a project management type mm -hmm. meeting without meaning to be right and I loved the way they worked together I loved their responses back uh, to someone who does not speak a word of Chinese and uh, I just found it to be fascinating so I asked them to send me their resumes okay and uh, I've sent a couple of them out to a couple of companies here locally because they all to a, well, except for one, one wants to go to the East Coast, okay. but five would like to stay in sure. the area. Sure. So I sent their resumes out and said, "Hey, you know, I, I personally, after 45 years in banking, am a pretty good judge of character. I would hire any of wow. these people." So anyway, good job. That's fantastic. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Mary. It's a really good job. Thank you. Uh, what countries are represented in your student body? Well, as you mentioned that you met with a group of, from China, uh, about half of our students are from China. It's okay. our biggest language by far. Uh, but we have students uh, from all of the uh, eight languages, and that kind of ties to the country. But we have, we have students uh, from France, Germany, uh, Spain and Mexico, and Uruguay, and all, you know, all of the all Latin American countries, um, Korean, Russian, Japanese, uh, and Brazil, Brazil for Portuguese. I okay. think that's all eight languages. I hope I didn't skip one. That but. sounds about right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. So those are the primary languages right. that, that the world speaks, mm -hmm. correct? And then there are secondary and tertiary. And well, I should add that now that we have the new specializations, um, we've opened it up to welcome those who speak Arabic and I believe Italian as okay. well. That's an option. So that's good. That's good, yeah. That's, that's, that's really good. Yeah. Uh, well, we've seen a growth in the language-based companies here mm -hmm, in the, yeah. in the uh, area. And Middlebury, is, it is the primary draw. And then secondarily is the Defense Language Institute sure. with the staff and faculty there. Mm -hmm. But I, I believe, you know, the, the Business Council holds the trademark language capital of the world. Right. So um, we firmly believe that we are the language capital of the world and that we do a better job of training uh, mostly on your backs uh, for the whole world of language and, and the capability. So. I, I hope that that um, is, is uh, something that grows the language capital of the world idea and draws more companies to the area. That would be, that would be very exciting. Yeah. Well, we, what we find is now some of the larger technology companies actually have teams that are embedded here that people don't even realize mm -hmm. that they're working um, 
through the language companies with some of your students on new products and new product development. So exactly. It's it's pretty good. Yeah. So. And we've we've got a number number of formalized internship programs between some of the major tech companies up in the Bay Area, and we're bringing more and more of those online. Our most recent entry is um, a more formal relationship with Facebook to have summer internships available for our students, and we have three students going to Facebook this summer. Perfect. So that's new. Yeah, that's, that's great. Well, I know your job fair was just like flooded with the names of the companies that were there were pretty amazing. Yeah, it's impressive to see who, who comes to the, the career fair. And yeah, every year it's, it's bigger names more and more. Yeah. They've discovered you. We're on the map now. <laughs> yeah, exactly. We love that. <laughs> and it's too bad. They discover you and some of us in, the, in your neighborhood don't know you're here. So we're trying to fix that's, that. That's why we're here. Thank you for inviting <laughs> us in. So in a perfect world, how big do you think your department could grow? Ooh, wow. Well, what we're monitoring is what happens after graduation. Okay. Uh, and when we had 30 students graduating every year, you know, in the high 90% uh, we're getting employment in the industry. Um, and our most, so we, our most recent numbers based on 2017 graduates, uh, for the first time ever, we were pegged at 100% uh, employment in the industry. That's or like wild. a fellowship or a job or you know maybe some students are still doing internships but at this point they're probably employed so people come into our program they know what they want to do and they're getting jobs in the industry now when we're graduating 60 students for the first time this spring i have no idea what's going to happen but i believe that the language services industry which is a 40 billion dollar industry um, and, and growing i think that number is probably dated by now um, it's a growing industry as, as companies realize that if they want to grow the path of least resistance is going global in many cases um, that companies are are going to need our graduates the, the the people that have the expertise in helping these companies take their product or take their idea um, to other markets around the world so I understand that like the really big companies have uh, I'm going to call this a, a translation localization group probably embedded sure. in them but there are a lot of mid-sized companies that probably don't have that expertise. Mm -hmm. uh, so then do they contract with companies like those that are here to, to perform that? So it's a perfect segue if you graduate from Middlebury and love this area, that then you can find employment here and work for maybe a $500 million company uh, on a project. Exactly. Is that how it works? We, we see a, a many different models in use by companies, um, some small, mid medium, and, and even large Fortune 500 companies outsource everything to an agency and don't do anything in-house. Um, but other companies have localization departments within their companies that then work with an agency. Uh, and the other extreme is, is companies who have hired enough people that they do everything in-house. They, they have direct relationships with the translators who do the translation. They don't go through a, a, an agency. And all those models are, make, have advantages and disadvantages. Um, but in, luckily, in all of those models, our, our graduates are involved. So. I, I love that. Well, as I said, I, I learned so much about languages. I think there were like, I'm going to use Facebook as an example. I think that it was quoted to me that they have like 397 languages that they would touch. Yeah. And I'm like, crazy. We just had Iris Orris, the director of localization from Facebook on campus yesterday, and uh, she said that 60% of Facebook's uh, content is, or 50 percent, 60% of Facebook's users are in other countries using a different language besides English. So they can now say that the majority of their users don't use English um, on the platform. Yeah. See, That's crazy. Go. <laughs> it is crazy. So what else do you need from this community? You, I think you have a huge economic impact on all of us in so many ways. But what can we do to help your program? Wow, that's a really good question. I think, well, one of the courses that I teach is called Localization Practicum. And in this class, we run this agency called Globe Multilingual Services. And the mission of Globe Multilingual Services is to perform translation and localization for what we call deserving nonprofits. And so we're always on the lookout for um, companies that are organizations that want to partner with us 
and um, in exchange for letting our students get experience, we'll we'll do as much translation and localization as we can for the, these organizations. And we've we've done work for the Community Foundation, uh, the United Way. Um, we do some translation for the the Monterey Weekly. Uh, the Spanish inserts in the weekly are done by the, the Globe students. Um, so we're always, we're always looking for organizations. And in some, some, some cases, it's not so much that we want to do the translation. But um, for example, right now we're working with the Salinas, um, uh, St the Steinbeck Center okay. in Salinas. That, that's one of our clients. And we're working with their massive pool of volunteers to see if they have anyone in their, in their pool of volunteers that could help us with translation to try to build kind of community engagement so that we're not just doing all the work, but seeing if they might have people who can can do some of that translation to keep their website and their events um, translated into Spanish. So you're and other not languages. for the next twenty years doing it all. Well, well sure. <laughs> it's it's we, we have we do have the translation skills, but we also have the skills to build up their teams and, and kind of hand over the reins. So that's I love kind that. of a, a model that we're using. It's kinda like teach them to fish, right? Exactly. <laughs> exactly. So uh, this year you've got Sixty graduates. We'll have uh, six. Um, this is our last group that's going to be relatively small. Forty graduates okay. this this okay. Uh, this spring. Okay, and I met six of them the okay. other day. So I have to say that I met a fairly good percent of them, and they were fabulous. Awesome, that is great. News. So um, you know, I I cannot thank you enough for what you do, and and anything that we can do as a community to partner with you and help you. Um, you know, even if it's luring students, uh, luring is probably not a good <laughs> word, but recruiting, yeah. uh, or recruiting companies uh, to why they should hire your students. You yeah. know, we're your partners. So. Bringing more companies, agencies, uh, companies that need localization to the area would definitely be helpful. Good. Yeah. So thank you, Max Troyer, so much. We're so happy My you pleasure. came back from France. Well, I'm happy to be here. I love Monterey, and we, and we like it here, too. So, I'm Marianne Leffo, Monterey County Business Council. This is your town. Don't go away. We'll be back in a minute. Thank you.